<laughs> so today's lesson is, lesson is 2.5 misleading graphs. As we've been talking about, when you look at graphs and data, you always want to have that critical lens because a lot of times the people that are sharing the information with you through graphs and charts, a lot of time they have a bias or an angle. So two types of ways to be misleading with your graphs. One is truncating your graphs and the other one is improper scaling. So truncating. Take a look at graph A and graph B. Which one would you prefer to look at? Raise your hand if you think it's, if you feel like A is easier to look at. B, raise your hand. Okay, so A is clearly easier to look at and maybe distinguish between those different months and the unemployment rates. However, A actually is the misleading graph in this case. And that's because the graph is truncated. And we'll read about this. Our, um, there are valid reasons for truncating graphs. And that would be to emphasize relevant information more easily. What makes the graph misleading is that it causes the bars to be out of proportion. So how to decrease the potential for misleading your audience. So you can use a truncated graph, but if you do, you need to use symbols such as the two forward slash marks that look like parallel lines to signify that the vertical axis has been shifted or truncated. And you can see that in the example over here to the right, the new single family houses sold. and seasonally adjusted annual rates. So you can kind of see how those rates get adjusted. In December, the rates go up significantly. But the key to this graph that we're looking at right now is the fact that they included those parallel lines to indicate, oh, we jumped from 0 to 500. And then it's valid to uh, shift the origin like that. The other thing we'll see is improper scaling. So you can see our example to the right. With home building, there's a developer preparing a brochure to attract investors for a new shopping center to be built in an area in Denver, Colorado. Okay, sort of like what we have at the Markham Apartments and um, shopping center that they're putting in there. You have to get investors to help actually develop your shopping center bef so that you know you can get it started, and then you make your profit and you can pay that back. But the area is growing rapidly. And so based on the data, it says that this year twice as many homes will be built there than, the last, than last year. And so to illustrate the fa that fact, the de developer draws a pictogram. And uh, what, so we just read this year twice as many homes will be built as last year. What about this pictogram? is misleading based on the actual information that we have. There you go. There, this, this house is four times the size, not twice the size, of our little last year's house uh, picture right here. So that's misleading improper scaling. They doubled the length and they doubled the width, which quadruples the area, and, and that's why that happened, right? You can, you can see where that might have been an innocent mistake, but it, it's misleading. Um, and so that's improper scaling right there. These are just two ways that uh, graphs can be misleading, but if you're interested, there's there's a pretty entertaining book out there called How to Lie with Statistics by Daryl Huff. You're welcome to check that out and find out all types of other ways that graphs can be, and statistics in general, can be misleading. And that's all for our notes for today. <laughs>